So what are we in? We are in a 2018 GS350 all-wheel drive, Jack. So what do you think? What What's your takeaway of the last week of having this? Well, there's a couple things that come to mind. And one of the best things that come to mind are pretty simple. <laughs> the camera sags. <laughs> okay, let's get right into it, Jack. No, the meat and potatoes. Yes. The Lexus, the 350, has one feature that has won me over mostly over everything else. Uh, care to explain? Yes. So I'm going to downshift via this plastic paddle. So what is that muffled roar? What is that coming from? A 3.5 liter V6, direct and port injected that makes over 300 horsepower on premium fuel. And you can't run regular in this thing. No, you can't. But aside from that, it still gets pretty good fuel economy. I'm able to get in the high 20s, and there is no problems with the tuning on this engine, unlike the Camry X, X, XSE. Because this is a similar motor that you find in pretty much everything Toyota makes. Yes, you're correct. This, this engine gives you all the horsepower and all pretty much everything that you want through revving it out. It builds power, builds power. There's no lagging, there's no sluggishness, there's no delay. You just put your foot down and all the way to almost 7,000 RPMs in certain conditions, otherwise it short shifts. I love the induction tone. I love the way that it feels and the way that it accelerates, and it's extremely smooth and refined during normal driving. So if you're looking for the GS350, you're gonna love the engine and the transmission. Which is a six-speed car, right? It's, a, it's old fashioned technology, so to speak. Yes, a six-speed automatic that's pretty quick to shift, and it's extremely smooth. There's no gear hunting, and you don't need 20 extra gears. You don't even Honestly, notice you it. never miss the, the two missing gears you get in most, like, you know, a traditional eight-speed ZF box. That's absolutely correct. And you know for, for certain, since this six-speed's been out for quite a long time, you're not going to have problems with this car no, in terms of drivetrain. That's why you buy this. And this is also the uh, the thrifty option, so to speak. This is about six or $7,000 cheaper than an equivalently equipped, say, Audi or, you know, 5 Series. That brings up a good point. Why would you buy this over an Audi or BMW, considering, I would have to say, they definitely look better on oh, the outside. This looks horrendous. It, I mean, it's, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and whatnot, but this, you know. It's so awkward looking, this car. And even with this paint color that I like, I get out of it, and as much as I enjoy driving it and the ride and everything about it, it's just not inspiring to look at. and I'm, It's not that Lexus always makes an ugly car. They can make a beautiful looking car, but this, you know, this almost looks like a, a you know, I hate to say it, like a victim or a war wound. It's, <laughs> it's pretty bad. Yeah, it's it's just awkward looking. There's just nothing graceful about it. It well, looks like you, a Hodge. You, you rear end someone, you're not going to be able to notice you've done any damage to the front end. Y you're right about that. Uh, but whatever. If you like like the car, well, you like it. It's It's definitely different. I think the next thing to talk about is the suspension uh, and the way that this car rides and handles. Like typical Lexus vehicles, it's super quiet, it's very refined. It's on the softer but not couch-like No, you're ride not in a Lincoln. Yeah, it, it's, it's definitely softer, but it's still got enough firmness to have a little bit of fun driving it. But like all Lexus, regardless if it's all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive, it's set up for safety. No one's ever gonna take this to the limit. No. I mean, there isn't a uh, GS350 all-wheel drive track club out there. Right, <laughs> and, and, yeah, and that, that's the thing. It, the all-wheel drive system is gonna be great for people that wanna drive year-round, um, even though it's not completely necessary unless you're in really bad conditions. It feels safe all the time, it feels pretty dynamic, and if you really have a lead foot, probably about to seven tenths, it handles really well. When you exceed that, that's when everything starts to fall apart. Yeah, but it's not a track car. No, I, I totally agree. And you know, people complain that why do people? Why do we always talk about? Well, you know, it does this, that, and nobody's ever going to drive it like that. It just needs to be said. I feel like you know, you got to say what the limits of this thing are, and the limits are in the handling department. <laughs> I will say though, you know, as much as it's a 
pro of having older technology that has proven reliability, a lot of the buyers in this market segment who are looking for a premium sedan might might feel a bit left out with this, to be honest. Why? The infotainment is at least a generation old. It's missing a lot of like the standard, more standard uh, options in this segment, like heads-up display, you know, massaging seats, Apple CarPlay, all that other fun stuff. I know you don't care about that, and to me, I can take it or leave it because in five years anyway, it's going to feel dated regardless of what car you're in. But yeah. you're buying a car that already feels dated in the segment. Well, you know, it's interesting you say that because to me, I'm just kind of used to it with Lexus, namely in the infotainment department. It's something that I turn off the screen and I never use it. I can't, I can't deal with it. And they're adding bigger and bigger displays to make up for the fact that they're... Oh, yeah. It's a, you're getting a bigger display that works just as poorly as a small display. So yeah. you can see more of the imperfections. But you're, I mean, I know we talk about this all the time. You're, you're in the minority. Most people who buy cars basically want a moving smartphone, unfortunately. No, I, I understand it. I totally do. And it's weird because Toyota and Lexus are a part of the open alliance for automotive Linux. So underneath all of this, you should be able to do pretty much anything that you want with it. And they just, they're, they favor this strange industrial quirky design with the joysticks and touch pads. And this one is yet another car that goes back to the joystick when the other models are with touch And the pads. joystick is horrendous. The joystick's bad. I mean, it would be fine if you're sitting at a desk and I say this all the time, I feel like most of these systems are designed on a bench. They're not designed by people that spend a ton of time driving it and using it for, for real. And I think that's one of the most disappointing parts of no, this car. No, I, I agree with you. It's, uh, I think maybe in a, a sterile lab environment would be fine, but the reality is you're moving, roads aren't perfect, and the last thing you want to be doing is staring at this bloody screen trying to figure out how to put a, you know, a destination in your GPS. Yeah. But I mean, the infotainment aside, everything else works here just as well as it works in every other Lexus. With, I mean, the the the, the fundamentals are so strong here that if you just ignore the screen and you no, ignore some of that, this is just a, a really enjoyable, comfortable car. I've had no problems driving this. Ride quality, supple. Steering is good. Seats are good. The HVAC is really good. It gets cold fast. The seat heaters work well. The seat coolers are you know, for the most part, okay. I mean, everything works like you would expect in a Lexus. There are no glaring flaws, to be honest. And for yeah. thousands less than the German competitors, this is... Yeah, it's a car that yeah. you know that you can buy despite some of these annoyances, and it's never going to break. And if it does, it's not going to be anything major. These are super reliable. The retail or resale value is really good. And, you know... You and I are in agreement, right? You would buy this over an equivalently equipped German... I would. If I had to have a luxury car like this, I would rather have this than the the German cars unless I was leasing. If I was going to buy this, I feel safe buying this. I know that I could drive it for 10 years. It's going to work. Everything is good on it. I mean, yeah, it's not the flashiest thing. It doesn't have that much prestige, but it works for what it's set out, what they set out to do. A four-door sedan that can get you to and from whatever destination and, and comfort. That's... Not a snooze to drive. Yeah. What more do you want? Uh, I don't know. The people that want aesthetics and tech will look elsewhere. I think that's it.